Hey everyone, Vegan Diver here. Just uh, checking out an aviation arrow on my way to Glacier National Park. I left Los Angeles this morning about 4 a.m. and uh, checked out one of these already in Las Vegas, South Las Vegas. Uh, unfortunately, it was way too windy there to say any words, but uh, just hiked up to this one right here. As you can probably see in the back there, nice big giant concrete arrow. Probably wondering what that's all about. Why would someone build this giant arrow up on the top of a mountain? Big hill, water treatment facility in the back or storage facility. Beautiful view. Well, turns out that back in the early 1900s, uh, the US government decided that we needed an air mail system to be able to shuttle mail across the country in a week or less. And to do that, they needed to fly airplanes across the country uh, without getting lost and even do it at night. And this is how they did it. They built these giant concrete arrows. As you can see, the arrowhead points the direction to the next arrow, which is uh, really somewhere off up in that direction. I actually have it mapped out. Uh, it's just off of a lake out there. And uh, used to be right here you have these stakes this used to be probably a 50 foot tower uh, and at the top of it there was a beacon light that rotated around flashed uh, and then two spotlights that came down and illuminated this arrow so you could see it at night and can you imagine that flying across the country in a little propeller plane just can't probably hardly see anything and you're just looking for this little illuminated arrow. And if you don't find it, you're lost. And you're basically up shit creek at that point. That's pretty amazing. Amazing that uh, old aviators were able to do that. This one is actually kind of cool. It's got a little black edit right here. It says uh, this was used as part of the Western Air Express route, one of the first uh, regularly scheduled passenger flights between Salt Lake City and Los Angeles. Pretty neat location, absolutely beautiful out here. Pan around and you can see uh, the background there, nice golf courses, beautiful St. George, Utah. And, uh, this is great. Anyways, I'm gonna head over to the next one and I'll uh, talk to you again. Bye. Well, I made it almost to the other aviation arrow here in uh, St. George. I feel there's four of them but I'm running out of time so I chose uh, to try to come to this one which is the one that overlooked the lake and it looked really cool unfortunately I just got here and I've you know got a passenger car and this road is pretty much completely impassable in a, in a little Tesla uh, you know I think you'd need like a quad or at least some big four-wheeler to get up there uh, I could hike it but uh, unfortunately, I just don't have the time. I gotta get to the campground by tonight and I uh, need to drive a couple more hours and wanted to see some more things, see if I can see these uh, dinosaur tracks uh, place out here. And uh, so I think I'm gonna just uh, cut my losses on this little narrow dirt road out here and head back to uh, civilization and see, uh, get back on the road. All right, well, I'll see you soon. Hey, check this out. I found this little trail over here on my way back from the uh, petroglyph site. It's called the Dinosaur Tracks Trail. There's actually dinosaur footprints. You see that? That is the outline of a dinosaur's foot. So I guess what had happened is that these dinosaurs used to roam through here. This one's called the hadrosaur, and they would leave footprints in the mud. Then those footprints might get filled with rocks and pebbles and stones and other things that would then solidify and turn into good solid rock here. And uh, and they'd end up right here, casting these rocks. And I'm guessing this rock, you know, broke off from something up on that hill. We got all the different sedimentary layers. 
And one of those layers just happens to be the layer where some dinosaurs, or, you know, the, those years when some dinosaurs lived. And one of those rocks over the years, millions and millions of years, weather broke it off, tumbled it down. So right down here, and now we can check out what a dinosaur's footprint actually looked like. Isn't that cool? I'm, I'm amazed. I am amazed what nature can do. Anyways, I'm gonna check this slide out a little bit more, see if we can find some more dinosaur footprints. And I'm trying to figure out which one of these layers existed when the dinosaurs were here. I kind of think it's that kind of whitish layer that runs along there. Just because I'm looking at some of the dinosaur print rocks and at the interface where it broke off, it's got some evidence of that kind of lighter colored quartz like uh, I don't know what it is looks about like it's that layer and if you notice that layer has a lot of overhang faces that have uh, you know been eroded away and then those rocks up there get cantilevered just like you see kind of right there and uh you know eventually it just buckles under its own weight and breaks off a chunk and i think those are the layers where those dinosaur prints got exposed this is not uh not so obvious but it is a dinosaur print you can see I and mean, these things are huge actually so look at that that and that is kind of its whole claw i mean this thing is massive. I mean, wow, can you imagine living here when these things were around? That would be scary, even though these things are herbivores. They ate plants. But man, would that be scary? I can't even imagine.